Drainage mills are familiar figures on the broad landscape. No longer used for their original purpose, they remain as icons of industrial heritage. Built to manage water levels to maintain grazing pasture on marshland, the mills are appreciated today by the hundreds of holidaymakers who visit every year. The mills at Horsey, Thurn and Burney Arms may dominate the picture postcards, but many other mills are also preserved, each with their own unique charm. Each of the mills in our list can be viewed from public rights of way. 10 Broads Mills You Might Not Have Heard Of Ashtree Farm Mill Castle Mill Herringfleet Mill Stracey Arms Mill Runham Swim Mill Tunstall Smock Mill Hardley Mill Mutton's Mill Palmer's Mill Polky's Mill Ashtree Farm Mill was built when many other drainage mills were being dismantled. It was constructed by Smithdales of Acorn and completed around 1912. It incorporates material from a previous mill at the site as well as parts from other mills. Already one of the last drainage mills built in the Broads, from 1948 it became the only one still working. The mill was derelict for many years after a storm in 1953 caused significant damage. It was restored between 2003 and 2006. Hardly Drainage Mill on the River Yare was built by the millwright Daniel England of Ludham in 1874. It was worked until the 1950s and drove an internal apple turbine. The mill was derelict by the 1970s. A project to restore the Grade II listed building to full working order was completed in 2013 and the mill is now run regularly by volunteers who also organise special event days. A volunteer centre has been constructed next to the mill Herringfleet Mill sits on the Summerlayton estate in the village of Herringfleet, Suffolk. The Grade 2 listed octagonal three-storey smock mill is clad in tarred weatherboards and has a boat-shaped cap and external scoop wheel. It is now one of the last smock mills in Broadland. The mill was built in 1820 by millwright Robert Barnes of Great Yarmouth. The mill was wind-powered and worked by Marshman up until 1956 and then it was assisted by a mechanical diesel pump. Mutton's Mill. This Grade 2 listed four-storey drainage mill can be found looking out proudly over the Halvergate Marshes just south of the Acle Strait. Formerly known as Manor Mill, it is now named after the last person that ran it, Mr Fred Mutton. The mill has a single pair of sails, the other is being restored. The mill can be viewed up close along a network of bridleways and trails that connect to make the Halvergate Mills Trail. Tunstall Smock Mill. This Grade 2 listed building is the only remaining drainage smock mill in Norfolk. Constructed from timber framing and made watertight with weatherboarding, smock mills were cheaper to build than brick tower mills. They were also lighter, which was an advantage on marshy ground. The octagonal mill was probably built around 1900 but was derelict by the 1990s. It was restored in 1994. Originally, the mill would have been taller and incorporated internal turbine pump. Castle Mill sits on the banks of the River Waveney on the edge of Castle Marshes, a Suffolk Wildlife Trust Reserve and a haven for wetland birds and wildlife. The current structure is not your typical windmill. However, it did begin life as the more familiar looking tower mill. A mill was marked on a map here in 1837. This was replaced by a steam engine in 1883 and then later by an oil engine. Palmer's Mill is one of only two timber hollow post mills on the Broads. Smaller and cheaper than traditional mills, they would once have been common. Brick built mills required deliberate demolition. Wooden mills degrade rapidly and are lost if not maintained. Palmer's Mill was saved by the millwright Richard Seago, who restored it in the 1970s. It originally stood on Acorn Marshes where it powered an iron plunger pump. It has since been relocated to the head of Upton Dyke. Runham Swim Mill gets its name from its proximity to the part of the River Bure where cattle were once driven across to graze the marshes on the opposite bank. The mill was designed by millwright and architect William Thorold, but built by Smithdales of Acle around 1852. 
it was one of the few to run an internal scoop wheel. Thorold was also employed as the civil engineer responsible for the construction of the Acle New Road, locally known as the Acle Strait. Stracey Arms Mill. This mill is a familiar landmark for those travelling by road, rail and river between Acle and Great Yarmouth. Built by Richard Barnes of Southtown Ironworks in 1883, it is one of the last and most technologically advanced mills built in the Broads, with cast iron components, patterned sails and an apple turbine. During World War II, it became part of the home defences when it was converted into a pillbox. One of the original embrasures has been reopened during recent restoration work. Polkis Mill This drainage mill at the Seven Mile site on the Riviere was restored between 2002 and 2005. On special event days, the patent cells can be seen powering a scoop wheel. The site has an important collection of other broads' industrial heritage, demonstrating the evolution of land drainage. A steam engine house, which ran a turbine that assisted the windmill but never replaced it, a diesel engine shed containing Ruston and Hornsby engines, and an electric pump.